Kahalo Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone of Ruel. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace and mercy to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. Back at you with another quick one during the week. Um, we're going to let most of this play, but this is also riding off the back of, uh, you know, how our people, uh, I mean, this society as a whole is just out of order, but most importantly, our people, uh, our men and our women. Um, are just completely out of touch with what is pleasing to the Lord. And, uh, of course, these things happen to us by design. So, you know, we're going to let this play. It's kind of really, it's kind of long, so I'm going to speed it up here and there. Let me see. Yeah, it's 10 minutes, so. But I'm going to uh, get a couple key points out of here, and then that will be it. And we'll get the, you know, we'll get some uh, uh, precepts and that'll be the video. Definitely going to keep this brief though, kind of short on time. So here we go. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, don't use any of it. I'm still so shocked that when I'm out, there will be guys that will come up to me and ask. Just the other day, I had a guy asked me at the grocery store, are you an Instagram model? No, I am not. And I kept walking and he followed me like he was shocked. You're not on Instagram? I'm like, nope. And I kept walking. And then, of course, he proceeded to ask for my phone number. I said, I am a married woman. And I said, good day. And I kept walking, didn't speak to him again. But he was so shocked that I was not on Instagram because he's probably so used to every woman he asks is, well, you know, how do I follow you on Instagram or um, fate with your Facebook? And it's just really sad that it's come down to that. Um, and women... You know, they think that they're actually getting this male attention because they're actually wholesome, quality women. But what they don't realize is all they've turned themselves into is masturbation material. That's all they are. Just a quick, that's it. They're, they're worth nothing else. They're worthless. You know, they can't cook. They can't clean. They can't be trusted. Um, they're not married. And she ain't lying. I just happen to have a decent wife. Um, but even the, even the decent ones in Babylon the Great are still indoctrinated with feminism. So, you know, if you got your little good situation, you know, throw up praises, give thanks, but uh, also marvel not if she transgress. Marriage material. They're not wife material, the kind of woman that you could really trust, count on, bring home to the family. They're nothing but sex, that's it. And they don't completely realize that either. These women actually believe today that they're quality, good decent women it's so pathetic and it's just it's laughable but anyway women are social media has made women it's like it's made their ego so big they're so which again when you go to that isaiah 4 and 1 scripture where it says i'll you know seven women will cling to one man that is a testament of how bad things are going to get out here because that pride that these women are walking around with this ego, this this complete and utter delusional uh, uh, ideology is going to be flipped on its head. So you know things are going to get wild. Right? That is just a testament to just how uh, uh, how 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 heavy the the boat is going to be rocked in Babylon the Great. Let me speed this up a little bit. Sitting on their like on a phone or you're crazy you're being judgmental dare you say anything about this and they're they're going to just lash out at you so right what? you can't say anything they hate him that rebuke it in the gate let me see now this is uh um hold on let me pull this up i don't want to go off the page because um my phone been tripping. TikTok been tripping. So this is uh, Amos 5 and 10. Okay, straight to the point. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So anything, anytime you offer some sort of correction, anytime, uh, you know, there's judgment involved, it, you automatically get shot down. And, and that, <laughs> goodness gracious, that is one of the hugest issues I have with my own people, with, with, with Jake, is you can't say anything. Oh, you know, so-and-so this, so-and-so that, but, you know, who am I to judge? Who am I to, nigga, 
goodness, great. No, no backbone. There is no standard. And that is why, like I did in the, the uh, previous two videos, I said nothing can save uh, or nothing's going to help this situation but outright judgment, fiery judgment. Okay. Um, what's the other? Uh, uh, yeah, another scripture is Isaiah 30 and uh, a 10. All right, where it says, um, straight to the point, which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit, right? And anything that is just, everything's free to go, for everything's free, good to go. You can eat what you want, you know, and that's that Christian tenets. You eat what you want, you love who you want, uh, all that other stuff. Any no, no sense uh, of right or wrong just do what thou wilt and if you try to introduce any sort of standard if you try to introduce anything regarding order or shame for foolish behavior you're the problem all that's gonna get flipped on his head though like like the, like there's that this is what is so sad you can't even correct it or call it out or say anything because the it does not do anything because there's too much validation for what they're doing. They're getting too many likes. There's not enough shame. We need to bring back shame to a lot of the behaviors we see out today. But because in mass there will be no shame for it, then it's it's just accepted. And if you're the one, one or two voices are against something, well, they're just like they're just hating. They consider anything that that calls them out on their behavior as hating on them. Right, but the actual hate is them uh, the people that are agree in agreements with you they hate you because you didn't warn them hey you shouldn't be doing this All right hold on All right, so here we go let me speed up just a little bit more with you know all these women and you can see that they're on facebook Every one of them had that phone out. You can see it's on. See them. They don't even look up from their phone. And this is men and women where they're just a glue to it. They grew up with it. It's what the, the tablets and phones is what their, 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 their morally bankrupt parents gave them to, you know, so they, they can go and do what they wanted to. And so now you can't, you can't go anywhere without seeing them constantly on their devices. But what you will see with women is constantly posting themselves and everything has to be seen. Did it really happen? Did I really wear this outfit? Did I really go to this place? If I don't post a picture about it, if I don't somehow flex on other people or what is seemingly a flex, these they're empty vessels. They're just shells of human beings. They, they look like human beings, but they are empty they're devoid of any character they're devoid of any purpose in life other than to get the bag other than to level up other than to be a boss babe and that's, that's all you hear this is matthew uh six and verse 16 i'm gonna re I i'm gonna skim through 16 through 24 Okay, so this is Matthew 6, 6, um, and uh, I'm going to read 16. Now, it's about fasting, but the, the point is people are doing things to be seen, all right, instead of having that, uh, um, you know, having integrity and doing, you know, good in, in, on your own. Nobody needs to see. <coughs> so this is your Shai, um let me turn on the red letter. It's Yahweh Shai talking about what you're supposed to do. Okay, so the topic is fasting, the true treasure, wealth, and wealth. So, our mammon, okay? Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of sad countenance, uh, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, right? Your reward, you did everything out in the open. There's your reward. People see it, okay? I'm going to fast forward a little bit. We're going to go um, 16 and 19. All right. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And whereas thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and nor steal. Okay. So everybody is everything about here, but which is crazy is because... Uh, this it's over. All of this stuff is gonna be up in smoke. Poof, gone. 
And that is why I preach every time when I do these videos. I say, build up the spirit, man. Invest, you know, we've invested early in something that's about to blow up, right? And I'm, and I'm speaking of uh, 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 your part in the kingdom. Or I'm speaking of on the return of Yahweh Shai because the fashion of this world passes away and it, you're watching it in real time. <clears throat> so let's, uh, I'm going to skip down to 22 to 24. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And here's the point. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is a representation for money. And today is getting the bag. Uh, I'm getting to it. I'm finna. I gotta wake up, get this money, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you can put yourself in a better position, cool. You ain't, it ain't nothing wrong for that. But if your goal is to forward yourself, I mean, to, to, to the so-called pinnacle of success in this life, man, you got another thing coming. And basically, you're guilty of idolatry. And the word idol or idols appears over 100 times in the Bible. Okay. And if you go to idolatry, um, uh, uh, Paul was heavy on uh, telling the the newcomers, right? Telling the uncircumcision, the Israelites that were of, that were in these Greek Greekish fashion, okay, grew up thinking that they were Greek, okay. So their nationality was Greek or Roman or Colossian or Galatian or whatever, but their ethnicity, their race, was an Israelite. So when they were coming into the fold. Paul was heavy on, hey, come out of these idolatrous practices. So if we go to the book of Acts, one example um, uh, is the Acts 17, where, where he went into Athens, and that whole city was given to idolatry. That's what it says on the verse 16. So I'm going to read that real quick. Um, all right, so for Acts 17 and 16, and the title or the top of the header is Paul at Athens. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, he his spirit was stirred in him when he saw a whole city given to idolatry. And it should. <coughs> this place should vex you sorely when you see these moles running around, when you see people um, wholly given to whatever idolatry it is, it should bother you. Now you know you you, you know you, you keep your cool and you understand that these things must you know needs be they gotta come to pass but it should still piss you off especially because you have the knowledge you know with much wisdom comes much sorrow you know how things are supposed to be and as you see how they are now they're completely flipped on their head okay so again we'll go to uh First Corinthians we're gonna read go on the top of that and uh, you know hopefully. You're being edified and following along. I'm trying to get these scriptures as fast as I can, but also be as thorough um, as possible uh, until I get a new phone. Because this thing is tripping. If I last, if I go too long on a video, I'm stuck. It won't record. So this is First Corinthians ten and fourteen. Okay, straight to the point. Um, actually, no, I'm on thirteen. Therefore, no, hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not uh, suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. And we're going to need that, all right? That ye may be able to bear it. Here's the point. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Idolatry. Point blank period. Flee from idolatry. And we all fall short. We all are guilty. Even I sometimes will be face deep in my phone. And I really, you know, if you judge yourself, you got to realize, hey, all right, I'm going off. I'm doing something wrong. I, you know, I ain't spent enough time in the word. I ain't spent enough time doing something other uh, or something within the realm uh, of pleasing Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. I'm spending too much time doing stuff that I'm feeding my flesh. You know, you got to catch yourself when these things happen, all right? Judge yourself so that way the Lord ain't got to come and, you know, set you straight, chastise you. Um, 
And the last two, we're going to get Colossians 3 and 5 and then Jeremiah 51 and 6. And Jeremiah 51 and 6 basically tells you, flee Babylon. And with that, I'm saying, pull your mind out of this place. Pull your affections out of this place. Pull what you pour your time, energy, and effort into out of this place and pour it into the kingdom. Do what you got to do while, you know... You know, you got to go to work. You got to pay your bills. If you can put yourself in a better position, do that. But have balance. Okay, so this is Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh unto the children of disobedience. And you are going to see that. We're all about to witness the children of disobedience. Get their issue. They gonna get their issue. Jeremiah 51 and 6. And we'll close it out with that. Flee Babylon. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51 and 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. And what we want to be is on the other side of that, not getting rendered that recompense. You fall in line with the tenets of this world. You receive the destructive reward of this world. So with that being said, I pray that you are edified. Shalom.